Host Mark Kaiser takes it to the edge today as he sets off with a 50 caliber Smith & Wesson handgun after Black Bear with Montana guide Mark Schutte of Stockton Outfitters. Right there, right there. Go. The plan is to use varmint calling to bring the bear running in the hope of finding a free meal. And if hungry bears and handguns weren't enough, Kaiser and his guide June Weather to contend with. Let's... You know, I can't say that black bears are on the very top of my list of species to hunt, but when I got a call from Mark Schutte to come out, maybe do a little spot and stalking, but also calling black bears, big black bears, I was ready to go. I drove nonstop from my home in Wyoming straight to southwest Montana. I was pumped. Hey, there he is. Hey, Mark. Hello, Mark. How we doing? I'm doing good. Good. You ready to go bear hunting? I'm excited about it. We've had a good season. And... I'm more excited than you. Well, you should be. <laughs> you should. Stockton Outfitters is established here in southwestern Montana, primarily as a bear, elk, and mule deer outfitting service. We've got 165,000 acres of public ground which we hunt in the Wise River Valley. Our philosophy is simple. It's hunt hard. Hunt hard all day, every day. We get you up early in the morning and uh, we hunt the entirety of the huntable period of the day. We do have some trophy record book animals up here, record book elk as well as record book bear. Not everybody gets to see one, not everybody gets to kill one, but what we're looking for is the experience and that experience being uh, pushing yourself to the maximum of your potential as a hunter and as an individual while you're out here for the five or seven days you're out here with us. Hey, we're hunting black bears in a totally different style. We're gonna try and call a black bear in close. We're hoping that we can get a good hunt in with the pistol, but if not, I'm gonna back it up with a rifle, just in case we have to reach out and touch him a little bit. As you can see, the wind's blowing a little bit here today. I'm gonna catch up with Mark, do a little glassing, see if we can't find a black bear to call in today. Now our first day out, we basically just did some quick scouting and an overview of how the hunt was gonna go. We were trying to find black bears in these big green open parks. That's where they're going to be feeding first, because that's where the most abundant food source was. Well, a few months ago, love was in the air, right? So in the springtime, all the critters are having their young. And that is the key to Mark's success. He uses fawn in distress, calf in distress, and other small rodent in distress calls to bring these bears in. At about an hour before the end of shooting light, Mr. Personality showed up, and he was hungry. There's no doubt about that, but not hungry enough to stop right there and eat. What we think was going on at that point is that that bear was on the track of a hot sow. Hey, it's breeding season, and if love is in the air, you know where the boys are gonna be going. <laughs> They're looking for love. So we brushed that one aside, packed up, and made the big, big climb up and out of that basin, ready for the next day. A massive Pacific cold front was moving in, and it was packed with moisture. And at the elevation we were hunting, from 8,000 feet up, that moisture was gonna come down in the form of what Santa likes best, a blanket of snow. So you got what, 100 yards of visibility at best? About 100, 150 maybe. I don't know, they're not talking this to break till the night. What do you think these bears are gonna do? Oh, I think they're gonna hold up. They're gonna be holed up during this storm. And if we get a break in this weather here, maybe they'll shake the snow off, come out, get a bite to eat, and we'll be able to snag one. If not, when this storm blows through, they should be hungry. That's what I like about the Rockies in the springtime, all the wildflowers, the beautiful green carpets of grass, the bright blue sky. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just, Amazing. It is glamorous this time of year, isn't it? Hey, 
When the going gets tough, the tough just gotta get going. Mark's a tough dude. So he said, we're just gonna keep on hunting and see what we can see. Maybe, just maybe, we'll come across a bear that, that didn't crawl under a rock and hole up under a deadfall that was gonna be out eating. I was right there with him. We had to keep hunting. We had a time schedule. There's no breaks. When the hunt was over, the hunt was over. We had to hunt right now, and that's what we did. Well, shall we go warm up? <laughs> you think we're gonna warm? Yeah, let's go. We're just gonna keep walking uphill. That gets us warm. Let's warm up. <laughs> Talk about brutal conditions. What we were finding is what we thought. Those bears were doing what everybody else in Southwest Montana was trying to do, stay out of the weather. When we got back that evening, some of the other hunters in camp had cut a track right before dark. A bear had been out moving. We went to that area the next morning, hoping that we were gonna see the same activity. And we did. Here we go, big fella. That's what we're looking for right there. Right there, there's the front part right there. Wow, see the toes in that one are perfect. Yeah. These tracks are five, 10 minutes old. There is no snow in them and it there's just, no it just stopped. Right. You know this area, where does he look like he's heading? There's some clearings right around this bend yeah. over here. Kind of ease our way this way. We're not gonna stay right on his track, but we're gonna parallel his track. Okay. And uh, see what we can do. We got around as fast as we could to another park, set up, hoping that that bear would work across the hillside, come out in that park, and waited, and waited, and called, and waited, and called, and waited. No bear. No bear showed. So we went back and backtracked. And that's a tough, tough proposal. We got over back on his fresh track again, and it just wasn't going to work. The wind was right at our back, pushing to where the bear was moving. We tried to stalk that old bear with his tracks. We gave it our best. It was the only thing we could do. But again, it just didn't turn out. So we looked ahead to the evening hunt, hoping for the best. Clouds were beginning to break. It was partly sunny. The bears needed to eat. They needed to get out and pack some calories in to warm themselves up, even with those pretty fur coats, they were probably starting to shiver. And that was going to be our advantage after the big storm. That evening didn't disappoint. When the sun had come out, the bears were out to play. Right there, right there. You got one? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Nice little black bear. Yeah. What do you think? Kind of... He's not real big. Kind of so-so? Yeah, he's three-year-old bear probably at best. I think we can do a little bit better than him. I can handle the climb over there. It's coming back to the truck that I might not be able to handle. <laughs> well, that bear went up and over the mountain, and so did we. Headed to a new spot, another big basin. It was not to be that evening either. That snowstorm was really, really wreaking havoc with the trip. What could we have done different? I don't know, Mark was running at 100% up until I got there. That snowstorm was just enough right in the middle of the hunt that it kind of threw chaos into the whole spring calendar of the deer, the elk, the antelope, and the bears. But I'll tell you one thing right now. Next spring, I'm gonna be right back here in Southwest Montana, hoping, praying for that face-to-face -face meeting for the black bear.